Joining me now is a UFC featherweight fighter who defeated Shane Young at UFC Fight Night 121 in Sydney, Australia earlier this month. It is Alexander the Great Volkanovsky here on the show for the very first time. Alex, how's it going? Thank you very much for the time. That is no worries at all, mate. Yeah, I'm feeling good. You know, always uh, always good to get the win in the UFC, you know, 3-0 and now, so uh, can't, can't be too disappointed with that. Yeah, 3 and is an unreal feeling. I'm just ready to keep getting these wins up. Absolutely, and uh, thank you again for the time. Congratulations on the victory. I know, you know, fighters always go into fights looking for the stoppages, and unfortunately, you were not able to to put uh, Shane Young away, but, I mean, you can't really complain with the 30-26 decision win. It was as dominant as, as can be without being a stoppage. Were you happy? I mean, it seems like you were happy with the win, even though you didn't get that finish that you're probably, you know, always looking for. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing that I am always looking for. I'm always looking for the finish, so... Yeah, disappointed, but uh, in saying that, you know, Shane done well. Yeah, he played real defensive, I think, you know, just he knew that, you know, I'm going to be looking for the finish and, you know, he worked ways around my my power and just but played, you know, real defensive. So he didn't give me too much opportunities, you know, he didn't throw as many strikes where I was waiting, waiting, you know, to counter and things like that. And at the same time, him being, you know, debuted obviously with the free opponent changes, him being the debut, you know, I just felt a lot of pressure, and you know, I didn't want. I knew he was looking for that one shot, so I didn't really want to give it to him. So I'd either, you know, wait for him to make the mistake, or, you know, when I make him hesitate, or when I get a reaction, and I'll, I'll sort of pounce in and, and and clinch in. But again, you know, I did uh, play it safe for my part, but you know, I had too much to lose, so I just was trying to get the finish, but at the same time been smart as I, as I went along. Well, that's what that, that's what I was going to ask you next. I, I mean, it seems like I, I think some people look at this fight and, and think maybe you played it safe a little too much just because it, maybe if you didn't, you would have been able to get the finish just because, but understandably so, why you wouldn't like go out there swinging wild shots and, and taking risks because the fight was a risk. He was stepping up from short, on very short notice. You're already too known the UFC at the time. Um, there, there's no reason to, you know, just hand this fight to him, give it away. So is, do you feel like you almost played it a bit too safe? And if you had chosen not to, maybe you would have been able to, to make an even bigger statement or, or, or no? Yeah, well, again, uh, yeah, um, he definitely he played it real defensive. So even though you know I was always pretty much in range, you know, I mean, like, I was always coming forward, really getting at him, waiting for him to have no choice but to throw. But he just wouldn't really commit to any punches. So I wanted him to take the risks in the strikes. So I was always putting myself in a position where you know he felt he had to because he was you know the pressure was on him, and he just didn't. He just didn't throw. So then you know it sort of made me realize okay he's just looking for that you know me to set up some short like set up some punches and then just try and look for that one counter so i just thought you know what i won't give it to him you know this is mma's it's a very unforgiving sport especially you know these small gloves you know i miss time one little thing and i can get put away don't get me wrong when i start fighting these ranked opponents i will take them risks you know i'm all about fighting pretty wild but at the same time when i know that that was his only game plan and I could see he was barely throwing anything. It just made me uh, play a little bit more safer than I'd like. But at the same time, again, you know, these things, you know, have has to happen. But again, it's MMA. So, yeah, I, I might have not been throwing some silly strikes. But, you know, I was working takedowns. I was really putting the pressure on him. And, you know, I know he was uh, defending really well. But, you know, that's a pace that I can keep up for, you know, five rounds if I have to. So I was just always going, you know, he done well to get up. But... You know, if he wants to get up, I don't mind. I let him wear wear out bit by bit. And I thought the finish would eventually come, but he he, he stuck through and uh, done well the whole way. Yeah, you, you ultimately did what you had to do and, and did so dominantly, as I said, uh, getting, uh, I think, a one ten eight round on uh, on the judges' scorecards. Now, I, I find what you said in the post-fight interview interesting. You actually said that, um, you, I, I, now, you said that you were supposed to fight Young earlier on, on the local circuit. Were you guys actually booked to fight, or was it just sort of like in talks, like it made sense? Were, were you actually, you know, officially on paper scheduled to fight, or did it not quite go that far? Well, oh, this is when I was pushing for the UFC. So I was pushing for the UFC for like two years. Every time there was a UFC around our region, like you know anywhere in Asia or, or Australia or something, I'd done a campaign. So I would have done like four or five campaigns in the you know the last two years before I made the UFC. And so I was always knowing that I'm you know really close to a UFC contract. So you know I wasn't fighting heaps regularly, but I needed to stay busy. So I'll do like three fights a year, and I had a fight booked on my coach's show, 
and there was a local show, and then like three weeks later, a promoter wanted wanted to get me on one of their shows, and this was my last fight. This was actually straight after this fight, I ended up getting the UFC contract, but he wanted me to fight um, Shane. Like I think it was like two or three weeks after, and I'm like, well, I'm not in any position to be fighting so regularly. You know what I mean? I'm waiting for this UFC contract. Do I really need a fight on this show and then fight on that show? Because this was, you know, who knows if I pull up injured or right. whatnot. Yeah. It's just something that I didn't have to do. And it had nothing to do with, you know, who it was or anything like that. But, you know, it's definitely he was winning. He was winning the fights. He was taking out all the guys in our region, him being from New Zealand. He come and fought on a lot of uh, Australian shows. And it was, yeah, it was bound to happen. But at the same time, I knew I was going to be in the UFC and I had that fight and then I got booked in the UFC pretty much uh, straight after that. So it just didn't happen. And now I know, you know, when local circuit, you know, there, there aren't, you know, set in stone rankings, but as far as what you had done when you were sort of, you know, the young fight could have happened perhaps and when, you know, where he was at his, in, in his career, were you farther ahead of him? Were you, I mean, considering you got signed a, a, a year and a half sooner, it seems like I, I would think that you were farther ahead in your career yeah, yeah, I definitely believe that. You know, I'm not a cocky type, but at the same time, you know, I had a world title. Um, I, you know, had like seven or eight national titles. You know, I was on a, like a 11 fight win streak or 10 fight win streak. You know, I was had a shitload of. Uh, sorry for the. That's not really a swear word, but <laughs> I had a lot of. Um, you know, finishes in that the ten fight win streak. You know, just so I'd done everything right. Not only uh, you know I was taking out all the top guys. I was, you know, ranked number one in you know Southeast Asia and all that for a long time. And so I'd definitely done a lot more than him. But in saying that, he was definitely on the rise. And you know, he he fought a couple of the you know the top guys around Australia as well, and he was winning. So it was going to happen sooner or later. But I made the UFC. Was it odd welcoming him to the UFC just because, you know, uh, a year or so back, you, you know, it seemed like that fight could have happened or did, you know, wasn't not so surprising just because, you know, he was on your radar in a way like, he, you know, you, you seem to think quite highly of him. You, you said he's, he'd done quite well. Um, what, was it odd to, to fight in the UFC after, you know, possibly fighting before the UFC or, or not so much? No, it wasn't, it wasn't odd. You know, at the end of the day, you need to fight, and I'll fight whoever. I'm, you know, pretty, pretty chilled and composed sort of a guy in the octagon. So whoever's standing in front of me, you know, I'm going to do do the same thing. But the, what was odd was the fact that I uh, know their camp really well. So this is something that uh, probably isn't really out out there at the moment. So you know, I'm probably telling you you first. So I actually heard something you about <laughs> that. Y- oh, you might have. Yeah, well, cur- one of your corner men, maybe it was the other <laughs> way. One, your corner man trains at his gym. Right? Yes, yes. So this, yeah, well, there you go. So I did. I've mentioned a couple of things, but I'll tell you a little bit more of it. Right. So uh, I end up uh, obviously it was getting real close to my fight. So I had Jeremy Kennedy first, and then like six weeks or f- four weeks, I can't remember what it was. He gets injured, and had um, I had Humberto replace him. Yes. And then with a a week to go, I think it was like a week or maybe yeah seven or ten days. I can't remember when we got the news that he hurt his hand. And we're like, oh, man. And then there was a few days where, you know, Sean was trying to get a matchup and it wasn't really happening. You know, I didn't get nothing back. And, you know, I'm, like, I'm not going to lie to you, I needed the money. So I really wanted to fight. And uh, my manager come back to me and said that Shane Young was uh, going to be, you know, who I'm fighting. And I'm like, oh, right, because I was talking to his coach the day before. So this is how much I know. And we're in a group chat and I'm in the group chat with his coach. <laughs> So he's told me, like, oh, is your um, opponent injured, Alex? I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh, this guy's uh, trying to get Shane in. And, oh, we just, yeah, we thought he was full of shit. Again, sorry uh, for my French. No, but, um, and I'm like, and I'm like, all right, yeah, oh, okay. He goes, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, he won't make it. Right, right. So that wasn't going to happen. And then my manager told me that's who I'm fighting. And I'm like, oh, well, that's weird. He, they just told me that uh, that, that wouldn't happen. But um, then I end up, then he ends up, after I get told that's who I'm fighting, he ends up uh, messaging me, oh, so have you found a replacement yet? I'm like, man, I'm supposed to be fighting your boy, I'm supposed to be fighting Shane. And um, he goes, what? He goes, all right. And then we sort of found out that a manager, see, I haven't, I haven't got this uh, news out, a manager was uh, um, saying that getting him the contract, but then was going to lock him into a, a contract with them. I'm probably going to get in trouble talking about this. <laughs> but then um, 
I was like, oh, all right. So yeah, nothing was set in stone. And remember, I, I, I really want to fight. At, at this point, I'm thinking I'm not even fighting. So I'm like, well, you know, Kenny, he goes, I don't know if he can make 145. I'm like, well, what weight can he fight at? And he goes, oh, 155, so we're going to fight a lightweight. And I'm like, well, you know, I need a fight, man. So if that's what's going to have to happen, that's what's going to have to happen. So we end up uh, sort of uh, talking to each other and making it work. And then, you know, we you know, got, got uh, Sean, you know, he got wind of it all and then goes, all right, no worries. And then that's how the catch weight came about. And, um, yeah, so Brad is who's from their gym, was always actually – going to corner me. He cornered me there in Auckland. And again, I know Eugene, I was trained at their gym while I was over there in Auckland. I even met Shane there. I remember shaking his hand when I went in there and, and started training. But um, yeah, so that's a sort of sort of how it come about. So we, we were like, oh, all right, well, we sort of just had a laugh about it. I don't know Shane too well, personally, but you know, I know his coaches and, and that you know pretty well. But in saying that, my cornerman, Brad, he does train out of that gym, but he trains in, at Tiger Muay Thai a lot. So he was uh, he was there for the last few years. He was only in and out of uh, city uh, kickboxing. You know what I mean. So well, he didn't really really know them. Oh no, uh, Shane. You know, obviously he knows me a lot more like, from Tiger Muay Thai and whatnot. So it was just yeah, it was just a weird sort of a process. But at the same time, it's a sport. You know what I mean. Like at the end of the day, I'm still going to try and punch his head, and he's still going to try and punch my head. We're in there to win. But that was uh, that was awkward. Just hearing a. Uh, Dan Hooker and like Eugene, like cornering against me and stuff like that. I was just sitting there. Uh, it, was, it was actually yeah, it was quite a funny experience. But you know they know a lot about me, so you know that's why I think they knew things that I, you know, I was probably going to try and bring to the table. And you know they defended it really well. So credit to them. But um, you know at the end of the day, I you know I still got the job done. Well, yeah, that's certainly an interesting story. I think, you know, it's a little different, but it's still along the same lines as like when a teammate has to fight a teammate. We saw Alistair Overeem fight Andre Olofsky. They're not best friends, but they did both train at Jackson at the time. Sometimes, you know, things like that have to happen. And and sure, it's an awkward situation, but, but, you know, it's MMA. Sometimes you have to put friendships aside and, and, you know, personal relationships. Yeah, 100%. Especially back in the day, obviously, uh, MMA is getting so much bigger in Australia. But there was a time where, you know, there wasn't too many fighters and there wasn't too many gyms. So when they would train together, you know, they're more likely to, to fight each other as well because, you know, you only have like, you know, probably, you know, 10, you know, good MMA fighters. So they try and get training together. So, you know, if they trained, they'll be more likely fighting <laughs> the next month or something. But... You know, that's just again, it's a sport. This has to happen. I've I've done this even in the the re, uh, you know in the national sort of circuit when I was fighting. I remember I fought James Malarkey. He was undefeated. And I remember training with him at, at a mate's gym. And I don't know. Obviously, training is totally different when you fight. You know, I'm not going to try and take people's heads off. And I don't know. From that little training session we done, he must have thought you know he could take take me on. And we actually fought. So didn't really end well for him though. <laughs> And with Brad moving forward, is he going to corner, you know, is he sort of one of your main cornermen, like, going forward? Is he going to always corner you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's, um, yeah, he, because I train out of Tiger Muay Thai as well, so I go there usually every camp. And um, he was, uh, you know, the striking coach over okay. there. So I know him really well. I've trained with him a fair bit. And, um, yeah, he's cornered me two fights now. So he's definitely someone that will be training with me. And I, I'm actually going to be going over to Auckland, City Kickboxing, where Shane is, uh, to do some training, because that's where he is right now. He's um, moved back to Auckland. He's going to be training now. They're pretty much full-time. Straight after corner and against one of his boys. <laughs> Are you going to train with Shane there? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. If he's training, I'll, I'll be there, because I'll probably go do a week over there, and there's a good chance that he'll be there. <laughs> is that is that going to be weird or not? No, nah, really? it's not. We no. were drinking with each other after the fight. So <laughs> Again, mate, this is... Look, obviously you've got some people that are in this sport and I don't know, they really, you know, like I said, I, you know, I'm not one of them. You know, I'm, I promise I've been a good good guy, you know. I mean, it's a sport to me, you know, you get people that play the bad guy, play the bully, that'll probably mean mug everyone that they see, but that's not me. So, you know what I mean? And that's why I want to fight them guys, you know. If they want to take it so serious and want to be so mad at the world and everyone, they can be mad at me and, <laughs> and uh, I'll sort them out. <laughs>
And as you said earlier, you had a bunch of opponents fall out for this before uh, Shane Young stepped up. Initially, it was supposed to be Jeremy Kennedy. He he got injured again. You were supposed to fight to earlier. Um, Humberto Bandone then got injured, and then finally we landed on Shane Young, and it, it, it worked out. How difficult was it, you know, midway through your training camp hearing, oh, Kennedy's out, and then, you know, a couple weeks later, oh, Bandone's out, and then, you know, adjusting to that different, you know, changing your game plan perhaps. How difficult was that? It is. It's annoying. It's definitely annoying. But at, in saying that, um, you know, I'm always a, I'm always positive. So no matter what happens, you know, I'll stay positive and I'll 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 just get through it no matter what. But you know, I, I don't really go fully game plan for specific fighters to the last few weeks anyway. Purely because I know anything can happen. I know there's a good chance, you know, there's going to be an injury. This has happened many times for me before you know people get injured not not saying they're scared to fight me or anything but you know i believe i'm i'm a hard matchup for anyone in the division and i believe they know that too so if camp doesn't go perfect for them you know if they get an injury and they have to have a couple of weeks off they go like oh yeah i'm not prepared for this fight and then they pull out maybe that's what it is that's what it must be because it's happening more you know a lot more than you know it should and I'll tell you a story at the end of this with uh, one of them guys anyway and then that sort of a uh, you know rest of my case but yeah, so just, you know, while things like that are happening, you know, obviously Jeremy Kenny, a grinder, you know, very um, very fit, you know, grab a hold here and just wear you down. And um, then you've got Bandone, you know, a southpaw with a nice left kick, you know, totally different styles. And then I end up having Shane Young again. Yeah, more probably well-rounded, but yeah, he's an orthodox. And so, but I mean, in saying that, you know, I when I'm training, I'm sparring with as many different people. As I can, you know, I'm not going to get it. I'm not only going to spar with South Pauls because I'm fighting a South Pole. I'll still spar whoever I need to because who knows who gets thrown at me on the day. You know, like I said, it could be injuries or someone could completely change their way, just their style, just to fight me. You know, their, their game plan from videos that I've seen was specific for their opponents. They might change it right up for, for me. You get me? So you, you never really know who you, who's going to come out come fight day. But yeah, so what I was going to say. Sorry, mate. I can I can go all day. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, we've uh, well, yeah, Bandone. So he pulls out ten days before or nine days before, and then straight after my fight, I had both guys call me out. And they want to because obviously there's pay per view card in Perth, and I'm sure they want to get on that card. So they've both called me out, and uh, I had Bandone. Look, I don't like to talk bad or like talk negative about people, but this just is a uh, exactly what I'm talking about. That's why I want to fight these top guys that, you know, if they don't have a perfect camp, you know, you know, they might have a sore hand, but they'll be like, oh, all right, I'll use my right hand till my hand's better and come fight time, it'll be, it'll be perfectly fine. You get what I mean? But so this was a, a week out, he hurts his hand, so he pulls out from the fight. Fair enough. But then straight after my fight, he's called, called me out and saying, oh, yeah, my um, I'm 100% um, recovered. Let's fight January, February. I'm like, wait a second. One week ago, you're telling me you're too injured to fight, but now you're 100%. So you what? You couldn't rest your hand for the week and then still fight me. You know your fitness is already there. So that that sort of annoyed me, especially I don't know if he just was just just trying to get the fight and still banged up. I don't know, but you know that just uh, shows me that you know he wasn't happy with how his camp was going and he's pulled out again. I don't like to talk bad or talk myself up, but you know he he said it, so he made it pretty obvious that. His hand, uh, well, I got told he broke his wrist or something, but, you, you know, your bones don't recover in one week. Do you feel like maybe Kennedy and Bandone don't really have the right to call you out and, and talk, you know, talk about you just because they were the ones who pulled out? Like, yeah, if you had pulled out and they continued fighting, completely different story, but if they wanted to still fight you, then, then so be it. But in this case, like, they had to pull out, even though, I mean, even if, you know, they were legitimately injured, they still, you know, had to pull out. Do you feel like maybe they should be the ones that are a bit quiet right now? Yeah, well, definitely. I don't believe, look, I didn't get injured. So, look, in, like injuries do happen. So I don't mean this in a bad way to them. So obviously injuries happen. But why do, when I say step back, I'm not saying they're a step back in, in competition. But they, again, they were going to be my third fight. Jeremy Kennedy is 3-0 in the UFC, but he was going to be my third fight. He got injured. I had my third fight. Now I'm ready for my fourth fight. So why should I store my, where I was at, for someone that got injured. I just don't believe that's how things work, you know what I mean? I wouldn't expect them to do that for me, and I don't think they would. So at the end of the day, it's not up to us, but 
I believe that, you know, fortunately for them, they got injured. So, you know what I mean? There's no, I just don't, I don't think that I need to fight guys that pulled out from injury, especially when I get told someone hurt their hand and they're, they're better a couple of days later. So that's, um, yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> and so after the fight, you, you were somewhat vocal in your post-fight interview. I know you don't like talking trash, but you, you, you said you wanted the quote-unquote bad boys. You want, you know, the top guys um, who talk a lot of trash particularly to sort of shut them up. Who, you know, who falls under that category? Are you looking at top 15 now? Are you, you know, willing to take an unranked opponent still? Um, I, you know, I, it seems like you're due for a, for a step up. I think you got that with Kennedy, but just the way with the way things uh, worked out, you know, I, I think after three straight victories over, you know, if we're being honest, maybe lesser competition. They, you know, some, you know, young stepped up on sh- very short notice, newcomer, etc. Um, you know, who, who do you want to fight next? Do you, are you looking top 15 or, or you know, who, who do you want to fight? Yeah, I want to, you know, I want a name if I can. Or obviously, a name or a ranked opponent. I want someone that's going to shoot me through these ranks. Obviously, you know, I've, I've, well, I was meant to fight, you know, a prospect like uh, Jeremy Kennedy. He's definitely top pro- prospect like myself. So I think that's why we're meant to fight. But again, unfortunately, he got injured. But, um, you know, I'm ready you know, I want to shoot for these ranks as quick as I can. So I want these, I want these top dogs. And again, I want these guys that, you know, if I get, you know, they're not going to pull out if they, you know, get a, you know, sore hand or, or something like that. But again, I don't like to talk negative, but you know what I mean? I want these top guys and I want these guys that like to trash talk. At the end of the day, I'll fight anyone, but you know, that's who I want. You know, you got, you got a few guys that, you know, like to talk and you always see them calling people out and things like that. They're the guys I want. The ones that uh, just like to talk and call people out, you know, you got your, you know, Lebov, you got your Andre Feelys, Jeremy, Ken- uh, Jeremy uh, Stevens, and, and things like like that. You know what I mean? So they want to call people out, call call me out. You know what I mean? If they want to try and bully and scare people, try and bully and scare me and see what happens. I think one name, and, and this is might just be just another name to you, but you know, right after watching your last fight and, and, and seeing you win, um, one name that really came to mind, and I think this would be a really good fight, and it, it makes sense style, you know, matchup wise. I think both of you guys are pretty close, and both of you guys are pretty similar. Very strong for the division for 145 pounds. Very stocky, you know, really good on top, good with the takedowns, good striking. Mursad Bektik, I think that'd be a great matchup. Yeah, he's definitely he's a name too. People do definitely know him. Um, is he coming off a? Well, he's was his last fight Darren it, Elkins. It was, was Elkins. It? So win was, loss, yeah. it I doesn't remember. make ton of sense. But I think he's still top fifteen. So yeah, exactly right. So yeah, he's definitely you know he's he's good, very well rounded. You know what I mean? Again, I, any name would be be good for me. You know right. what I mean? I just I obviously don't want to take a backward step. So unless. You know, someone gets injured and I need a late replacement. At the end of the day, I need the money as well. So if I'm going to be in camp, I don't want to miss out on a fight purely because he's not ranked or something. But at the same time, I want to, I want to prepare for, a, a, for one of these top guys. So if that's a name that gets thrown to me, so be it. But any of these top guys, mate, I'll fight bloody for the title if they want it. Obviously, <laughs> anyone would. But I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just whoever they throw at me, obviously... It's got to be the right time for Sean Shelby to throw these names at me, but I believe it is. You know, I haven't lost a round in the UFC at the moment. I, I don't think I've lost a round. So, you know what I mean? Uh, I just think I, I'm ready for some of these uh, top 15 guys. So we'll see, we'll see what gets thrown at me. And, um, yeah, I'll be more than happy to take them out. You're three known the UFC. Two of those fights are in your native Australia. One is nearby in New Zealand. Are you happy staying, you know, close by to your, to your home country, um, home, home, you know, uh, you know, Australia and New Zealand, or would you like to branch out a little bit? Would you like a fight in the U.S.? Oh, I definitely want to fight in the U.S. So that's something that me and my manager are talking to. But obviously, after my fight in Auckland, the Sydney card was so close, and that's my local, you know, my local town. So I think they're always going to put me on that card. You know, so you know, I'm obviously going to be on most of the, you know, regional, you know, Australian shows. You'd think I'd be on it, like the Perth. If it wasn't a pay-per-view, you know, I'd probably be happy to go over to the States. But it being a pay-per-view, it's something and so close, I would really like to be on that card. So that's something, that's my something. You know, again, I, after this fight, I was saying, yeah, I want to be, you know, I want to fight over, I'll fight in Sydney, then I want to go over and fight in the States. But this Perth card looking really good. So, you know, I definitely want to be on that card. But, I mean, after that, I'd love to fight over there. Obviously, like you said, we definitely need to branch out and, 
to do so, you want to be on these big cards over there. And moving forward, do you want to sit out a little bit? You, you know, you've you're three known in the UFC um, in the past year and a half, um, fairly active compared to some fighters. Or do you want to get right back in there? I know you said you need the money, um, and, and I'm sure another paycheck within a, a month or two would certainly help. But what are you looking at? Are you, are you do you take a fight as soon as possible? Do you want to sit out, maybe enjoy the holidays a little bit? No, I want to fight straight away. You know, I'm always uh, you know, my weight. I keep my weight pretty good now. I always, you know, always here after my fights, I'll eat a bit of a bit of crap and that. You know, I do every weekend, but at the same time, during the week, I'm dieting. I'm always keeping my body pretty close to weight anyway, like close enough to do the cut and make it within the two weeks. So you know, if if and I'm always fit, so I'm always training pretty hard. So you know, I mean, if if there was a card that I could get thrown on in the next couple of weeks, I'll take it. And then I'll fight on the Perth card as well, you know what I mean? So unless they go, look, if you fight here, you wouldn't be on the Perth, I'd say, oh, I'll hold down to Perth. But I want to fight regularly, definitely. So I'm up for, you know, short notice fights because, I, again, I stay pretty pretty active and um, I'm fit all year round. So that's one thing that I definitely want to do. I want to fight regularly. And when you signed with the UFC in 2016, did you sign a fairly typical four-fight deal? And if so, would that mean you have one fight left, or did you have a, a uh, more uh, more more of uh, more fights on your deal? Yeah, it was a four-fight deal, so it's just a regular um, deal that they do. But you know, I've had the three fights now. Um, I'm sure we'll probably be renewing the contract because uh, they don't. You obviously they don't usually want you to ha- have your last fight because they they don't want you. Know, you know, to finish your contract and be a free agent, I'd say. So I reckon uh, we'll be uh, looking in. Obviously, he's busy with uh, Shanghai. He'll be getting home probably now. So we'll, we'll probably uh, talk to him and, and see what's next. Well, and, uh, you know, you, you, you're a guy who, it sounds to me like you, you're wanting to stay in the UFC. It doesn't sound like you're a guy who wants to test the market and see sort of what, you, what your worth is and maybe try Bellator. Are you, am, I, am I right there? Do you want to stay in the UFC? Is that sort of... No, you know, for sure you're, you're going to stay in the UFC or, or could you branch out a little bit and, and test the waters? Oh, UFC is definitely where I want to be. You know, obviously it's the biggest promotion in the world. You know, I mean, a lot more eyes on you there to build your brand. It's, you know, one of the best organizations to do it. So, you know, and it's always been a dream of mine. So, you know, I think uh, definitely that's uh, where that's definitely all that's on my mind at the moment. But at the end of the time, we all need money, don't we? So <laughs> if someone throws ridiculous amounts of money, obviously that could make people think twice. But UFC is definitely something that I've uh, always wanted and uh, I will pursue. And I imagine you and your uh, manager will be looking for quite a boost uh, in your paycheck because I know you just you said multiple times already that you know financially you, you could use a bit more money. Um, you definitely, as you said, you needed uh, this past fight. Is that sort of the case? You, you know, I, you deserve it. You're three in the UFC, as you said. You haven't lost a round. Yeah, exactly right. I, I believe so. You know what I mean? And um, you know, I'm in a, a market where you know Australia obviously got Robert Whitaker doing great things, but you know we need to we need to push as many uh, prospects as we can this side of the the world. So I believe you know three and zero. I don't think many Australians have done you know three and zero. You know their first three fights. So. It's definitely something that I'll be, I will be pushing. You know, obviously you never know. I will leave that up to the manager. I'm not a, I'm not that good with numbers, so I'll let him deal with that. But yeah, I definitely, obviously, I'm doing this for my family. So the the more money, the better. Well, Alex, thank you very much for the time. I really do appreciate it. Congratulations once again on the victory a few weeks back. Um, before I let you go, let my audience know where they can find you on social media, and if there's anybody you'd like to thank or give a shout out to, the floor is yours. All right, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, really appreciate it. And yeah, if you want to, if you could follow me on uh, all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, Alex uh, Volkanovsky, at Alex Volkanovsky. On Twitter, you'll find me, Alex, Alexander Volkanovsky, or Alex Volkanovsky. And uh, yeah, so yeah, follow me and uh, big things to come.